Hello and welcome to the Watch Lucky channel. If you haven't done so, please, I urge you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I've got new videos uploaded every week just for you. In today's video, we are going to do a full review of the St. Martin Black Bay Homage. Reference number for this watch is SN008. On the review desk today, we have the all blue version. They have two colorways. They've got one which is black and gilt version and I've selected to loan the all blue version here. Thank you very much Glenn, thank you very much St. Martin Watches for loaning me this watch for the review. So the Black Bay Homage, I think they were launched or they were in production only at the beginning of this year and it is really hard to pinpoint which version of the Black Bay this watch uh, actually copies because this watch here at 40 millimeters, it is actually bigger than the BB58. BB58 is 39 millimeters, but this one here is also smaller than the regular or the original 41 millimeters black bay but one thing to note is that this one here is thinner than both to the black bay watches because this one here comes in at only 11.5 millimeters in total thickness whereas the bb58 is 12.4 millimeters and the original black bay is crazy it is almost 15 millimeters in height so throughout this video i'm just going to call this watch the Black Bay homage and because it is exactly what it is. It is a homage to the Tudor Black Bay models. You can't pinpoint which one is trying to copy but you do know by looking at the watch you do know that this is indeed a Black Bay homage. I know I'm a little bit late to the party now at the time of this video uh, there should be about four to five videos already done on this particular model so I'm just going to share with you the good things as well as the bad things uh, that I find on this watch. Because so I've zoomed in the lens a bit as I talk about the specifications of the SN008. It's got a case diameter of 40 millimeters as stated in the official spec sheet. But bear in mind that the bezel is actually a little bit wider than the case, right? I'm not too sure if you can see it on screen here. So the bezel, the coinage here actually juts out a little bit and it does have a bezel size of 40.5 millimeters and along with it it does have a crystal size of 30 millimeters case thickness for the watch is really impressive as mentioned earlier it only comes in at 11.5 millimeters from the base of the rather plain looking case back to the top of the slightly domed sapphire crystal luck width on the black bay homage is 20 millimeters so no problems here if you're looking uh, to fit NATO straps or even leather straps to this watch. The luck to luck on this watch here is 47.8 millimeters. If we are talking about just the lux, now with all the protrusion coming from this male end link here, have a look here at the male end link right in the center of this end link, and the effective luck to luck distance is 54.5 millimeters. So this being a homage to the Black Bay series, it's got no crown guard and the crown size here is 6.8 millimeters, which it is not a problem, but I think it is a little bit thinner than what it should be due to this beveling here. All right, so there's a bevel here and then it goes into that shark logo. I'm not going to remove uh, the stickers here because this is a loan set. So I do feel that the crown here is a bit too slim, too thin. Powering the St. Martin Black Bay Homage is the PT5000 movement. The PT5000 movement is a clone of the ETA 2824 and it really follows the 2024 in many ways. It's got power reserve of 38 or 40 hours, hex and hand winds and even on this example I've got here, it's got a go state position so there will be two pops until I go to the time setting uh, function. All right, so in terms of winding here, I've got a request right after my unboxing video uh, for me to check the winding, check on the winding here. So uh, I would say the winding here is a little bit gritty. It's gritty, but I think it doesn't really affect the function or the accuracy, all right? So the hand winding movement here does feel that bit gritty. Otherwise, I think it's, you know, pretty okay. So the PT5000 being uh, higher beat movement this one here has got 28.8 K uh, beats per hour and I think uh, due to that it's got a higher price tag uh, than watches that come with the NH35. At the time of this video review the San Martin Black Bay Homage will set you back about US dollars $330 so you can buy this off 
the St. Martin official website. If you use my code here listed on the screen, the watch kaki, you will get a $20 discount and I do get a small commission. So please do that if you wish to support the channel. Thank you very much. So other things to note about the specifications uh, include this ceramic bezel insert here. All right, it is done in an all gloss finish, very glossy finish and the dive markers here, the time markers, they are engraved, all right? And there's also a slightly dome sapphire crystal, which I really like, all right? It doesn't give too much distortion. So this watch here is also not very heavy. I weighed on the digital scale with the full links, all right? This watch is unsized, the bracelet is unsized. With the full links, it came in at 145 grams, and I think uh, that's pretty light you know, for all stainless steel bracelet model. So let's go on and talk about the case design and overall build quality of the St. Martin Black Bay Homage. I must say this is a really, really good job by St. Martin, all right? They've really uh, up their build quality on this one here. So over here, the build quality is just excellent here. The brush finishes all over the watch at the case side, at the top of the lugs, the bracelets, the brush quality is just really, really nice. Okay, they've also, you know, put in a high polished bevel here, just like the Black Bay style, all right? So uh, the, for the Black Bay watches, they've got a polished uh, slab side here. And over here, I'm actually liking the brush finishing. I prefer the brush finishing on this homage here. It's pretty amazing. I know lots of people are gonna hate me for saying such things, but you know, I've always preferred brush finishing and I really think <laughs> I would prefer the brush case size uh, on the St. Martin here. So all the lines here, they're very well defined, very well made, all right? It's very clear, very sharp, but no hard edges, no sharp lines, all right? So when I say it's very sharp, I'm, I'm trying to say that, you know, all the cuts here, the machining here, it's done really, really well, all right? But it's got none of that sharp, or hard edges here that you know can cause any discomfort so I would say I'm truly impressed by you know the build quality shown here by St. Martin and the high quality finishing actually extends to the bracelet as well just take a look we start by looking at the end link here okay all the brushing is very well done you know you don't see rough edges even at the corners now it's the same for the lux here I'm just gonna turn this watch here, you will see at, on the inside of the watch here, all right, all well, the brushing, the machining is very well done, so I'm truly impressed. And even if we look at the buckle here, the clasp and buckle, all right, everything here is milled, all right, no sharp edges anywhere on this clasp, okay? Just have a look here. This corner here, it is rounded, wow, okay? It is rounded and you can really see the effort all right, by the manufacturer to put in nice finishing and to round off so that there is no discomfort here. I can, you know, dig my finger and thumb into it and there is no discomfort. I'm very impressed. The only area where you can see, you know, that, hey, this is not a high uh, price product would be the insides of the clasp. All right, so on the insides of the clasp, you do see a bit of a uh, rough machining, but I think that's very easily forgiven. You know, for the price you're paying, US $330, I think, you know, if you have such finishing here on your watch, anyone would be very happy. So even the bezel engravings, the loom pip, the coinage here on the bezel, they're also very nicely executed. All right, none of that. Uh, poor finishing found on budget watches and there is no bezel wobble of any kind let's just check the bezel action here clicks are precise so moving on to the dial design this one here obviously follows uh, the Tudor Black Bay it's got applied markers on the dial here there's no chapter ring the chapter ring is printed on the dial itself and I really like you know the quality that you see on the edge of the markers so the edge of the markers they've got this chrome or silver borders and you know they reflect the right amount of light okay not overly cheap looking at the same time you know there's a bit of reflection as it plays with the light here so all right 
right? So overall, I would say the DAO execution is also very good. I'm on the fence about this newer uh, St. Martin logo. I'm not a big fan of how it looks. I think it looks a bit cartoonish. I actually preferred uh, the applied St. Martin word logo I found on my blue tuner. So the blue dial here does have that bit of sheen. It is not reflective. It is not sunburst, but it is not flat or matte dial. So I would say there is a right amount of sheen going on and it really, you know, goes really well with the gloss ceramic bezel. Okay, so I've seen a few videos where the reviewer said, uh, okay, I wish this watch here has got a matte ceramic bezel, but I think uh, as it is, it looks pretty good. Uh, it is a good match. So minimal text found on this watch, it only says automatic and 200 meters at the six o'clock position. Uh, I really welcome this. I really dislike watches with too many uh, lines of text. So the case back here is sterile, okay? It's got no printing or no en engraving. I apologize for this uh, fingerprints and smudge here. So I'm just gonna unbuckle the clasp to show you. All right, here again, you can see you know, the entire watch is very well made, the case back, the case sides here. All right, so I'm really loving this slight dome sapphire crystal. Again, I must say, uh, you know, it gives off that vintage look and at the same time, it doesn't affect readability by too much. So overall, a very clean dial design. I really appreciate the fact that San Martin has chosen the no date look. Okay, I really appreciate that because I think you will really spoil uh, the look of the dial if you, you know, cut open the date window, three o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, whatever o'clock, you're just gonna spoil the overall cleanness of the dial. Uh, uh, I really don't mind the gold state position, all right? So I'd rather go for that than to forcibly uh, just you know open up a date window so i'm just going to zoom back out a little bit to tell you a little bit more uh, about the bracelet of this watch here so uh, this one here is a slightly upgraded clasp design uh, my tuna my tuna homage that i bought sometime last year it came with a much bulkier uh, clasp and i'm really liking this you know just double push button operation here really nice nice machining uh, on the butterfly here as well as the buckle itself all right uh, the only downside is you know there's some rough finishing found on the inside of the buckle okay but i think that's you know very acceptable at this price point and there is no micro extension or ratcheting extension here it's only got four micro dot adjustments and i think i'm pretty okay with that because uh, not everyone goes diving with a dive watch and most of us only do desk diving and uh, I would actually appreciate a slimmer uh, clasp over one that's got ratcheting system and all that but it's really too bulky. So this one here also follows the full riveting design of the Black Bay. All right, so the protective stickers are still on this watch. I'm not going to remove them. Uh, I have to answer to Glenn. <laughs> he has given me the permission to remove every sticker on this watch size it up wear it do whatever i want but you know being a good friend i just want to minimize uh, the usage on this watch because i really want to upkeep my reputation and now it's time for the loom test i'm gonna switch off the studio lights and okay so you can see that as with many san martin watch models this one here the loom is simply no slouch all right i'm going to bring in the tudor black bay 58 for comparison all right, so this one here being a blue watch is really nice to have the BGW blue loom. And here is a comparison with the BB58. <laughs> the BB58 has got green loom. I don't know what grade this is called. I know it's green. That's all I know. So, uh, you know, both watches, they just show fantastic loom brightness here. And of course, I have to bring in the king of the hill when it comes to loom. Okay, so here's the samurai coming in, you know, to do a quick comparison. And as you can see here, you know, they're just equally good, equally bright. So I would say the San Martin loses nothing uh, in terms of loom when it comes to comparison, even with, you know, big players like Seiko. And here's a look at the fake wrist shot of the Black Bay homage on my wrist. All right, at 40 millimeters, 48 millimeters luck to luck. 11.5 millimeter 
uh, thickness I think this watch is very manageable I would say it's a really good size even for smaller wrists but uh, you know the same old problem you know comes with this male end links here and many reviewers before me have highlighted this I've highlighted this issue to Glenn so this one here is not just a matter of male end links here so I found out that this problem is uh, not really just about the male end links okay I've got other watches with male end links but they don't wear so poorly they don't have this weird look all right just take a look if I wear the watch you will see that you know these parts here you can really see the bracelet sticking out okay so it's not really a matter of wrist size because uh, in reality you will need very big wrist for the watch to sit like this all right uh, I don't think there are many people with what 10 12 inches wrist so <laughs> we're talking about human size wrist uh, you know this part here is bound to show up and it is very unsightly so to illustrate my point here I'm just gonna show you another watch that I've got with me in the studio so this one here is a male end link as well all right but it doesn't have that awkward look when you put it on your wrist okay just quickly put it on my wrist to show you what I'm talking about so have a look here all right male end links yes but it doesn't have that unsightly you know exposure of the bracelet all right still male end links but this part here doesn't protrude all right doesn't show you know so crudely whereas on the San Martin Black Bay it shows up all right rather ugly all right so you can see here the bracelet just you know jets out this way so this is caused by the fact that it is male end link and on top of that this part here is sitting above the links take a look here it's sitting above all right hence it makes it look so unsightly and of course in an ideal world you will want a female end link and that really allows you to wear the watch very comfortably and you know it gives you a really nice look and a really great fit so I'm gonna remove this to show you how a female end link is gonna help so just have a look here the effective luck to luck is actually shorter than what the specs would suggest so overall I would say this one here is you know near perfect it's a near perfect watch from St. Martin now from the dimensions I really love how thin the watch is even when compared to the Tudor Black Bay the dimensions the build quality the finishing here is just fantastic really lovely brush finishing here no sharp edges at all no sharp corners bracelet is you know really good quality clasp is superb nicely done rounded corners here what more what more can you ask for all right i've got budget swiss divers with 90 degree corners here and when you put on the watch it's gonna scratch you a little bit but you know we put up with those things over here they've got rounded corners smooth out corners fantastic job by San Martin very good build very nice design clean design of course there's nothing to boast about because this is like a homage a copy to the Tudor watches okay I know many people are gonna have views uh, about homage watches but you know in terms of quality in terms of build quality and all that uh, I would say I'm truly impressed and you know I think I would recommend this watch to anybody so of course you know the issue with the male end links can be sorted out when you wear uh, leather strap NATO strap and all that but uh, I'm gonna issue Glenn and his company a challenge okay Glenn please come on all right tell your engineering guys your product development team and all that please look into the female end link here all right once you've got that sorted out you have a winner here and I think you know many people are just gonna continue to be impressed by your products so there you have it that was my review of the San Martin SN008 homage to the Tudor Black Bay and I must say this watch is just amazing all right so if not for you know certain problems that I've mentioned in this video I may purchase one for myself all right so this is the watch Kaki I'm from Singapore I'm gonna see you next week for more videos this is George we're saying goodbye for now bye bye Let's say 
you know, if this watch is green, uh, I might not be able to return the watch because I'm sure George will want to keep this watch. All right, so <laughs> thank goodness the watch is not green. So.